Hey everyone, it's Pat Keegan, and welcome back to the DIY Home Build channel. Um, I'm really excited to be back. I'm, I apologize that I have not been posting videos as regularly as I would have wanted to. Um, we've been very, very busy, and uh, I know that sometimes that's no excuse, but it, it is difficult to for me to get the time to you know shoot these videos and then post process them and and everything like that so i do apologize and we're going to be trying to post more regularly i'm going to apologize also in advance as i had i messed up and lost a, a lot of the footage of the actual install of these cabinets which was really what i was hoping to get you know on film for you so that you can see you know how we scribe the cabinets to the wall what goes on in the thinking process how we deal with outlets and vents and and, and things like that so um, anyway apologize in advance I debated for a while whether I was going to even post these videos for this project but I think there's some things that you can still learn even from the um, even from the shop build of these cabinets so um, I'm going to complement this video with, with a couple or three um, skill building videos so that we can show you how to scribe to the walls and, and how to make these arches that you see here in the balance um, of these upper rails. And so um, I, really the purpose of this video is to try just to explain some of the thought processes that went um behind this actual design and that these are this and to share with you some of the things that you have to keep in mind so you know as you can see the the client was very pleased with the work that we did and and that always you know makes me feel good and you know my reputation is very important in terms of you know our ability to deliver what we say we're going to deliver and do a very very professional job and so you can see that there's some of these details in here like the arch um, that's uh, that are in these valances here I'm gonna I'm gonna post a video on how to make them I have a very um, um, pretty easy to build jig um, but it does take some time to actually get the arches out but it's always worth it because the jig uses a router and it's much easier to um, to manage um, how clean the arch actually looks rather than trying to use a jigsaw and hand sand it or even a bandsaw and try to to hand sand it or machine sand it down to look like a perfect curve um, so there's a couple of skill builders there you can see that one of the one of the comments that the client made was that these bookcases look like they've always been there and that's like one of the number one things that I like to hear because um, that means that you've done your job and you, you've made something that you know looks like it was part of the house to begin with um, it matches the the decor that you have in the house the trim matches the things that they that the client has um, and even these little details and everything like and the reason it obviously looks like uh, it's been built in is because it literally does go from floor to ceiling I personally don't prepare one don't prefer built-ins that you know stop at the seven foot level so that people can put plants and things like that it just doesn't look like it was like fully built in to me that's just a personal opinion but you can see here with the trim that's around the bottom um, you know this was decided by the client they just wanted some simple shoe molding everything was simple and straightforward you can see these are are relatively squared off um, in terms of the the edge banding here the trim that goes on the front of the shelves the doors are flat panel doors. I don't know if you can see that in this detail. Um, very simple arches and trim work around the fireplace. Nothing really overly fancy. No fluted casings here. It's just a very simple, clean, elegant look. And and I and I really like. This is a very enjoyable build, you know, for me personally. And and I just uh, enjoy doing that. So, um, I thought I would give you like a. Uh, before picture here to kind of just quickly show you you know what we were kind of up against and as you could the first thing you probably notice right away is that the fireplace goes from floor to ceiling and the, the it was the desire of the client because they didn't really care for this style of brick and they didn't want to pay the money and and all that to have the um, you know fireplace taken down stone by stone we have these slits here that you can see where my mouse cursor is behind the pictures 
Um, this fireplace was built so that some of the heat that is going up the, the chimney, the flue, is returned into the house. And they, um, we had to take that, in, take that into account during our built-in, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, but they didn't want to lose that aspect of it either. Um, so one of the stipulations that the client made was um, that uh, she and he did not want us to glue to um, silicone construction adhesive or drill or screw into this brick. And part of that reason was if they decided that they want, one day want to redo the brick on the fireplace, then we can back out just the middle section. They can deal with it and then and then and then do that but they didn't know whether they wanted to keep it or not so um, that was kind of our instruction you can see here and and if you do your own built-ins uh, your own built-in projects you're, you're gonna run into this stuff very consistently um, we have a, a forced air vent here where the heat in the air comes out uh, we have some speaker wire that was um, originally hanging here for mounted speakers that were you know fixed to the ceiling and you can see we have some outlets in the back here um, you know that would be behind the base cabinet now in order to save the client money we always offer the option to not install back um, back pieces onto the um, base cabinets because they're really not needed if the client really is insisting on wanting them then we'll put them in but uh, we didn't do it in this case because it helps save money it helps save the a little bit of money on the material and a little bit of money on the actually installation where you know we would have to cut holes in the backs of the cabinets to get these outlets in and the way I do it is I bring the outlet forward with an extended box so that it's attached to the built-in so it doesn't look like you just cut a hole in the back and you're plugging stuff into the outlet through the hole that's like not very professional in my mind so a lot of challenges here but these are fairly typical challenges of um, of built-in projects and one of the built-ins that we have coming up for you that I'm gonna try to get someone to kind of professionally take the film so that I don't lose the the end footage there um, is we have some baseboard heaters um, some of you may have those in your homes particularly if they were built in the 60s or 70s um, you know that you're going to run into these things so it's good to kind of meet them head on and just understand what you need to do to deal with it so I'll explain some of that uh, of that material later so let's move to the design photo here um, as you can see here this ended up being the final design you know roughly we have the, the the double bookcase here that you see in the picture we have a single wide uh, bookcase here the fireplace now again in the picture there's more um, you know, I try to get it get the point across to the client with the minimum amount of um, sketch up work as possible. I mean, if I can just get the basics down and they see it and they go, yeah, that's what I want. If they end up needing more detail, then I put the detail in there. But design time is consuming and you kind of want to minimize that time. So this was the design we finally went with. You can see here. Um, this is where the vent is going to be in the back and we've adjusted that fireplace heat um outlet if you will um, we're, um installing a, a little bit of piece of sheet metal and some venting that's going to cause that air to go up toward the top and out over the television so that heat is not going to be a problem so uh let's see so let's talk about a little bit the first design that we went through was uh let's see version one here now mind you don't pay any attention to this you know very much shorter um, you know um, above mantle uh, section of the built-in because um, it, this was really just to get the bookcases finalized and I threw this in here just as a you know a visual or whatever obviously this is not as high it comes down much much further but you can see immediately that in the first design we we went with which was the clients um, you know the clients explanation of what they wanted you can see this is one large bookcase here and uh, you know a slightly like medium sized bookcase here and I recommend it against this because this has a this is 53 inches basically from end to end and that's a very large shelf span now you can do that by doubling up the plywood in anything over 36 inches um, you can you have to add at least 
these um, front edge bands, which are like one by twos essentially. And if you're if you're and you, really the way you should do it is double up on the plywood. So you're basically making shelves that are literally an inch and a half thick. They're two pieces of three quarter ply, you know, glued and nailed together to make the shelf. And that way you ensure that you're not going to sag under the weight. But it just looks kind of blocky to me and large. So I, I came back with the design alternative for the client, which is uh, version three. So let's talk about V3. And so you can see this is where the double bookcase was born, so to speak, and the client really preferred how this looked. And so we knew that we had the bookcases um, pretty much locked in. And even though we didn't have the details of the fireplace worked out yet 100%, we, we were comfortable enough to, to, to start the construction on the cabinets. And, and believe me, even the last day we were there, um, you know, trimming out this fireplace portion of the surround, um, you know, there were some last minute changes that we made even on the last day. So you have to be adaptable and flexible to these things. You cannot get tunnel vision and you have to expect that you're going to have problems with your built in that you're going to have to think of solutions for. So if you can get in that mindset, you're going to be way ahead um, whereas if you just get tunnel vision and you get frustrated and stubborn and it just doesn't work out. So one of the things you can see here is this arch. This arched valance that I came up with was a way to um, hide any kind of holes or venting above that but keep the vent still behind the valance so that the heat would rise up, come out of a vent that would be behind the valance and then disperse out from underneath the valance um you know as well and they liked the idea and the concept but it turned out that the television was too large to facilitate the drop down between uh, you know the the length that or or height that this balance had to be so um so we ended up going with up uh, as you saw uh reverting back to vision version 2 um, we, we ended up going with essentially this design, but the point of this is it's a very simple thing. I didn't spend a huge amount of time on it, and it was very critical to having the client make some, um, some of the design choices with us. And you, you, if you're going to do this for a business, you've got to be able to provide your client some visual context of the design. Um, because th remember, this is a piece of furniture. This thing is going to be going in your home. Uh, or in a client's home permanently and you want them to be very happy. You want them to be able to walk into the room and each time they walk into the room their breath is taken away a little bit and they and they're just very glad that they did it and I think we succeeded with this particular client um, in managing those expectations. So with that being said, um, I'm going to start the construction videos anyway. Again, I apologize for screwing up the footage of the, um, of the install, but we're going to supplement that with some skill building videos, which essentially will accomplish the same thing. So stay tuned for that, and I appreciate you watching, and please post any comments you have below this video or any questions you have. You, you only have to take a look at the channel to see that I'm very interactive with um, people that post you know, legitimate concerns and questions and really want to learn from it. Because I really believe that with some patience and some right tools that, that the average homeowner can tackle a project like this. They just have to break it down into smaller and smaller pieces until they're manageable. So thanks again for watching and stay tuned for the next construction videos.